Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over your MVIC, and the MVIC is used as a basic profile to determine an unknown bacteria. MVIC looks for, and what it also stands for, is Indole, MRVP, and Citrate. Now MRVP and Citrate use direct tests for themselves, while Indole we use in conjunction with another test called a SIM test. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. In order to test for indole, we'll be using a SIM test. What SIM stands for is sulfur, indole, and motility. These are the three things that the SIM test looks for. Now, doing this experiment, the SIM test uses a solid medium inside of a test tube, and we'll be using a stick as opposed to the loop. With the stick, we'll flame it, grab our bacteria, and simply just stab the media, as you can see over here. Try to just go in a simple straight line and don't go in a jagged motion. Afterwards, we'll incubate the tubes. And some things we can see right away after we incubate it. When we look for sulfur, we're going to be looking for the presence of a black precipitate. While motility, we're looking for something that's cloudy. Both of these things will be present right away when you pull the tubes out of the incubator. With sulfur, we can see here that a large portion of the test tube is black, meaning that sulfur was produced. The amount of sulfur can vary. You're just looking for the presence of some kind of black precipitate. doesn't matter how much or how little. If it's there, it's there. Pretty definite. Now, please excuse the drawing. I just didn't have the colors for it. But it's just like a clear haze from the original SIM tube. And what that means is that we have motility, cloudiness, means motility. This one can get, can get kind of tricky, but when you look at the stab section, it will be a little hazy. All that is is just growth from the actual bacteria. If the bacteria is indeed motile, then the whole test tube will be cloudy, not just the area around the stab site. Motility, there's really not much of a question of it. Either the whole test tube is cloudy or not. But if you have something where like you have a bit of growth exuding out from the stab site, then that's something that you would want to ask, ask your lab professor. But for the most part, if it's just a little bit just surrounding the stab area, then that's just bacterial growth, not an indication of motility. But now, lastly, the thing that we're all interested in, indole. The thing with indole is that we don't see this reaction right away. The thing we have to do is add COVAX reagent. And when we add COVAX reagent, the thing that we're going to be looking for is a change in color to red. Not through the whole test tube, but just through the top portion where the COVAX reagent meets the media. If it's red, then that's positive, meaning that indole is there. And indole is a byproduct when tryptophanase breaks down tryptophan. With MRVP, we're using a broth which contains the carbohydrate glucose. And when bacteria ferment carbohydrates, an acid end product is produced. What MRVP actually looks for is what the bacteria does with this acid. Does it keep the acid around or does it neutralize it afterwards? So we'll inoculate our bacteria into the broth let it incubate, pull it out. Afterwards, we're going to split that broth into two test tubes, add MR reagents to one, VP reagents to another. And we're going to see which one of these two test tubes turns red. Now, what does all of this mean? If MR is the one that turns red, then that means the acid that was produced by this bacteria from fermentation has been allowed to remain. But if VP is the one that turns red, then those acid end products have become neutralized. For this reason, both of these test tubes cannot be positive. They cannot both turn red, and that's because either acid is allowed to remain or it's neutralized. There's no in-between here. Now a good test question for you guys is, why do we specifically use glucose as a carbohydrate source in this medium? How come we don't use something else such as lactose? With the citrate test, we're going to be using a solid medium inside of a test tube. And the way that works is we're going to take our loop, flame it, do all our aseptic technique, 
And once we have our bacteria, we're going to go down far into the test tube as much as we can. We don't want to touch the media just yet or pierce it. So once we get down to the bottom of the media, now we're going to apply the bacteria to it and we're going to squiggle our way back up. We'll flame our loop, grab our bacteria, go all the way down to the bottom of the media without piercing it, squiggle our way back up. One go should be more than enough. The thing that we're going to be looking for is whether the bacteria can use citrate as a carbon source. And it uses citrate as a carbon source only if citrate permease is present. Citrate permease actually brings in the citrate into the cell and allows the bacteria to convert that citrate and use it for things such as the Krebs cycle. And we determine the presence of citrate by seeing whether CO2, sodium, and water react together in order to give us sodium bicarbonate. Now this isn't a chemistry class, and depending on your lab professor, you may or may not need to know the reaction. If you do, please feel free to shoot me an email and we can go over it. But this isn't a chemistry class and I don't want to get you guys off topic. So, with the presence of sodium bicarbonate, the pH on the media begins to increase because it's a basic product. And when we have that accumulation, the green media that we once had now turns blue which indicates a positive result, meaning that citrate permease is, is present, and this bacteria does in fact use citrate as a carbon source for energy. So to sum that all up, we have our indol, which we have to use a SIM test for. And when we add COVAX reagent, we're looking for if that top layer becomes red. If it does, then it's indol positive. If it remains yellow, then it's indol negative. With MRVP, we're looking for which reagent turned red. So we take our test tube, divide that in, into two, add MR reagents to one, VP reagents to the other, and you're gonna see which one turned red. So either the acid was neutralized or it wasn't. You can't have both of these tests be positive. It's good to run this test at the beginning of lab because sometimes it can take a while. It can take maybe 10 minutes for some in my lab when I took this class, others it took them like an hour, hour and a half. So do this in the beginning and while you're running these other tests, it'll give you time, it'll give the MRVP time to react. Now citrate, you're looking for if we had that blue color from that green color. And what this basically means is that citrate is used as a carbon source and was broken down and brought into the cell so it can do things such as TCA. So with that, you guys have your MVIC. If you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to shoot me an email, and I look forward to hearing from you guys.